I love my kitchen and the time has finally come to put in a sink. But like all my projects, I want to do something simple. It's got to be extremely compact and use space very well. So I found this sink kit that's going to have most of what you want. We're going to have a pressurized on-demand water pump. We're going to have a simplified water tank system. And we're going to do something a little different on where the water is going to run out to. So if you're interested in knowing how to do this and how to make your own kitchen sink and water system, stay tuned. Let's get started. So here is the Kindred sink kit. And when I first saw this, I was really leery. I was like, for the price, this is too good to be true because there's so much that comes with it. And I got it for, I think, right about $80. The price does fluctuate. When they seem to get low on inventory, the price seems to run up, and I've seen it go up as high as $120, $130. Links to everything I show you will be below, so just check the pricing when you want to do this. But in this kit, you get the sink, and you get the faucet and the drain kit. And if you had to purchase all those separately, it would be expensive. Now, first I thought, well, then the sink won't be good quality. But I was really surprised. It's a good, thick sink, and if you have priced small sinks they're expensive i guess because of the low production but this is actually a solid sink it wasn't built tinny um it's about six inches deep and so it came with the drain kit which i've already put in there and then on the other side and you can see it's all metal um on the other side there's a little uh little gasket here and then i put on the screw here so that took care of the sink now what else you get, it also comes with, the directions aren't bad, um, they're pretty brief, but they're not terrible. Here's the faucet, and there's, um, this is plastic, and this is plastic, and this is plastic, but the workings here, which is important, the valves are metal, and so it's got some weight into it, so I, I thought this was actually pretty well done, and I like how tall the riser is. Um, now this part's plastic, so if the kids decided to karate, karate chop it, you might, uh, that might be done, but you can just replace this, it's a standard fitting, you can get another one. It also comes with the drain, the strainer, and the stopper. Some more metal bits and pieces, which I ended up not using these. Some water connectors, and these are connectors to attach the sink to the countertop. Okay, so when I was designing the, where the refrigerator went, I, I knew the sink was six inches deep, so I allowed six inches, but what I did not allow for was the drain kit and the trap and all the water lines, and it's like, oh no. So I got this, and I was like, I am totally screwed up here. But what I was able to do is go online and I found this wonderful drain kit. This is really designed more for pop-up campers. But what's awesome about it is this piece right here. This is what I'm interested in. I really don't care about the rest of it, even though you do get this hose, but it's too short. And you get this piece on here where you can close it outside. But this is what I needed. This is going to function as the P-trap. And so this is going to make us where we also, if you drop something in there, you can get it out. It's got screws on the bottom. It's going to allow us to connect the water line here, but what low clearance. So this is a lifesaver. So here I've just gone ahead and screwed it onto the drain. Now there's no gasket between here and there. It's just plastic. And I was like, well, there ought to be a gasket there. Well, I went ahead and put it on and it is, this part is plastic. So I didn't screw it too tight. I put my finger over this and I filled the sink up with water and it didn't leak. So, um, so far it's okay. Um, maybe down the line, I don't know. I have to keep an eye on this, but look how much room that has saved me. So now, if I calculate it right, I'm only going to have, at most, a quarter inch between right here and the top of the fridge. So that's a little scary, but we'll deal with it when we get there. All right, so let's look at the water pump. Now, I went ahead and spent the money on the water pump, because this is going to be the final project. We're doing this kind of in phases, but I, I want to go ahead and just do the pump once. So I got the pump that I needed, and this is the FlowJet pump, and this is a new one for me. I really like the reviews on it. FlowJet's a good company. This is the triplex diaphragm, so there's three diaphragms in here, and you can see it looks like a triangle. And this is supposed to make it quieter, and it's also supposed to avoid that thump, 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 thump noise. And this is going to be mounted under the sink, so I was really wanting something quiet, and it, I wanted the full-size fittings, and this is really cool. It comes with um, comes with all these things, but it's it's an easy connector. So basically, you just pull this forward, and then you take one of the connectors that comes with it, and it's got a rubber gasket on it, and then you just push it all the way down and in. You close this connector here, and that's it. You're done. And it can even rotate and not leak. Look how simple is that? And so I don't know. It comes with two of these, one straight like this and one will move and then it comes to comes with the other type which is going to be the threaded fittings here is some of the specs on it here's the model number and so all i when i search for it um but i'll put the link below is it's the ends in 144a and it is the triplex flow jet 
So good reviews on it, was impressed with it. I think this is gonna be great. And when we get to the full blown system, this is gonna be awesome. So let's talk about the water tank. I don't have time or the money right now to get a big water tank and mount it and do this big hot and cold water system. So this phase, I'm going to simply be using this two and a half gallon jug. It's gonna be mounted under the sink and I can have multiple of these jugs and I'll have the uh, water being drawn out of this tank into the pump, up to the sink, down through that adapter, and then we're gonna empty. I'm just gonna drill a hole in the floor right now and put it through the bottom of the MAV and just catch it in a bucket because um, later on I'll do a gray tank underneath. But those tanks are expensive. You gotta be careful about getting those mounted properly. So we're gonna make a full functioning system that's gonna be cold water for right now, but it's gonna be simple to install, I hope, and I think it's gonna work just great for what I need to for now. So your sink placement is going to be a bit of personal preference. Um, I'm trying to put it under this cabinet a little bit to, to get it pushed back a little bit. But so what I wanted to check is I made sure that I measured the height from here to the top of the faucet and make sure that it would clear if it was up under the faucet, if it was up under the cabinets. And so that looks pretty good. So the next step they say to do is to turn it upside down and draw an outline on the countertop for where you want to put it. Now the reason I don't put it on the left side is this is my slide out desk. So this part of the countertop slides out and back and this makes my desk, which I love having all this workspace. I have a bar stool. I'll put a link right here above where you can see the video on how to build this sliding cabinet. So because of the plumbing, it must be over here. Plus this is a pass through and you can things through there. Just talk to people through the hole. So it's gonna need to be on the right side. So it's very limited where it could go because of the drawer. Now I've got some very tight challenges for where this sink can fit. Very narrow range. So things we have to clear are this drawer to the right. I have these two slide outs, one here. I have the refrigerator slide out here. And you can see there just is not much to work with. And then also I have the chassis air conditioner over here. So all this has to fit in this very narrow space and I've got to get drain lines and water lines in there. The direction said put some tape down and trace around where the outside of the edges are. And I like using the duct tape. I use this when I did the countertops because I think the duct tape works better in making sure the formica doesn't um, flick up, flake up when you cut it. So I put some duct tape there. I lined up a, a good line on the back off the back wall so that I could have a good straight line right here. So I measured this off the back wall, double checked it was straight, and then I laid my sink down there. And then I just took a piece of, I just took my pan and drew an outline. Now the directions say to take your outside line and draw an inside line three quarters of an inch wide so that the flange will fit inside. So I've taken my line, my outline here, and I've measured in three quarters of an inch, and I have drawn a square all the way around. Now I'm gonna use the sink to copy the radius here so I'll know where to cut on the edge. So here I've got my corners drawn in. I had to add a couple extra pieces of tape just to make sure I would have plenty of room on both sides of the line. So we don't want to cut this line. We want to cut this line. Now what I've done is I've taken my drill and a one inch bit here and I've drilled a hole inside the line. And then I'll take my jigsaw and I'll start going in here and cutting along this line. Um, you want to run the, you go slow, but run the jigsaw fast so that it doesn't slow down and start popping up the laminate. Also, I like to use um, a blade with the metal teeth, these little small metal teeth, because you don't want to use this guy here, because that's just going to, it's going to rip it. So this is kind of just for wood, cutting fast on wood. So I'm actually going to use a metal blade. I don't know if that's correct, but it worked well on the kitchen countertop. All right, so some cutting issues. Uh, three quarters of an inch in was way too much. The sink didn't fit in at all, so I had to keep going back and recutting and recutting. I probably recut all these lines at least three times, which tore up the formica. Hopefully it, it'll be okay on this side of the line. But really a half inch was more what was required, and the sink fits extremely tight. So three quarters, um, the sink's not gonna go in, so it's gonna be between three quarters and half, but just depends how you wanna cut it. But I think a half inch all the way around is end up what it is, so the moment of truth, let's pull the tape off. <laughs> Not gonna be fun. Hopefully that's all gonna be outside the sink. So, yeah, we tried. If it, if it only been a single cut, I think it would have survived, but the repeated cuttings just took a toll on it. All right, so time to drop the sink in. It's a pretty good fit. So let's check the edges to see if that if it all the damage stayed under the flange, which it looks like it did. Very nice. Man, I'm excited about that. Let's take a nice long 
look here. All right. All right, so next step is we want to put in the sink clips. And so you get a clip that looks like this, and you can see this little slot on the bottom. This little, this little thing here goes right in that hole right there. And so you push it over the edge like this, and you clip it in. It's not easy to get in with one hand, but what you'll do is you'll end up with what looks like this. Now at first I thought, well, how are you supposed to get the sink in? But then I saw that you can lift this up and you can tilt this in so that it'll clear to get inside there. And then once it's in there, we'll flip it back straight and screw it down. All right, so here we are under the sink. You're gonna to wanna to get you a piece of cardboard or something to put underneath you because you're gonna to have to lay on your back and use both hands. So here's the clip. So you just flip it over here. And I found, just take your screwdriver and you're gonna need a long bit like this to get into those tough places. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten this down till it looks like this one, till the clip starts flattening out. And then go up and check and see if you need to go a little more. I wouldn't, be careful not to go too tight so you don't bend the sink. So I didn't, I didn't cinch it all the way down just till when the clip started deforming and then went up and checked to see if there's a gap. And if there's a gap, I just took it down and screwed it down a little bit more. I tell you what, this sink looks a whole lot smaller when it's installed. So I got everything cinched down, laying in there. I really like this. Now, what happened down underneath? Okay, so I temporarily reinstalled the Dometic and there is only a half inch to spare. So I thought it might be down to a quarter, but I got a whole half inch. So what we're gonna do is now I've got to do the drain, but if you, if you see, there is simply not enough room now to run the drain, but I have a little ace up my sleeve. There's about a three inch or four inch gap between the back of this cabinet and the back wall. So I can cut out that back section. It's just kind of flimsy cardboard. I can cut a section out there and we can run that drain tube over top and back and down. All right, so next let's work on our drain line. It's pretty straightforward. I will need to put some pipe, uh, some thread seal tape around the drain line before I put this on. And then the next thing we'll do is, here's the tubing that I've got. I like the reinforced tubing. I just think it's a little better quality. This isn't gonna be under pressure or anything. So I've got here uh, a clamp because we are going to be in a moving situation and we want to make sure everything is on very tightly. And I'll put this on under the sink like this. This will go in there and then I'll clamp it down and then we'll run the drain line through the holes I've cut in the floor. Under the sink here and I've cut out a big section back here in the back of my cabinets where I have that extra space. I'll be mounting probably my electrical box back on that wall. So um, here the tubing comes up. And here I put the thread tape around those threads, screw this on tight, but not too tight, don't break the plastic. I put this uh, clamp on again, tight, but not too tight. You tighten it too much, it's either going to split the vinyl and that's going to leak there, or it's going to crack this housing. You can always tighten it later when there's a little drip. So start with snug and then you can work your way tighter. So I zip tied the tube up here so we can clear the fridge. All right, so the line goes back here and I used a one inch drill bit and drilled a hole through the floor. So it's always nice to have options. So one option is to get another bin here. I've just used a, the two and a half, another two and a half gallon water jug. And you can see it comes through here and I could catch it in here. Um, also could get a bigger bin or eventually a whole water tank for this bay, but it's just, I don't think it's quite big enough to really have a nice size tank. I think I'm gonna end up having to put something underneath. All right, here's option two. If you're in an appropriate place, you can use biodegradable soap. And if it's just water, I've got another hole here that I drilled and it just comes out underneath the bottom here. Uh, one other thing, avoid trying to do it on a cold day like today when it's in the 30s because this pipe does not like to bend when it is cold. I always like to test every step of the way. That way you're not kind of overwhelmed when you finally put the whole thing together and switch it on and everything goes south. So I just filled up my jug with some warm water, try to get that tubing to relax a little. And I put the stopper in. We'll fill the sink up here. See if that little stopper is going to work. And while it's filling, you make, take a check down here. If I see any evidence of water coming through that drain, be feeling up along here for anything. All right. Looks like we got that about filled up. All right. So now we'll pull the plug. 
back under here. Everything looks good. We'll check it out outside. And so outside, it just finished draining. So it looks like we're pretty good to go here. So let's start working on the pressurized water line in the pump.